check this out. Just a little help for us that are emotional. Okay? This goes out to the emotional people. This lesson's for you. So it includes me. <laughs> I'm over here in Genesis. And I'm going to start reading at 26. I'm at Genesis 43 and 26. And again, I have no clue where my glasses are. So forgive me if I have trouble reading this. <laughs> All right. 26 says, And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in their hand into the house and bowed themselves to him to the earth. So these are his brothers. Abraham, there's a big famine in the land, and Abraham sent his sons into Egypt to buy grain so they could eat. And little do they know, their little brother that they sold off into slavery rules Egypt now. <laughs> yes, our father works in mysterious ways. 27. And he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man whom you speak? Or spake is he yet alive see they don't know this is joseph they don't have a clue they don't even recognize him why because he's dressed up like an egyptian ruler married to an egyptian wife having israelite children with an egyptian wife so joseph a son of the living god works for egypt but he does it righteously it's a good read go check it out but we're not dealing with that right now. Right now we're dealing with how he deals with his emotions. With how he deals with his sorrow or his anger. Okay? That's what we want to look at. Even though he was oppressed and employed by the pagans. This is how he carried himself. Check this out. And they answered, Thy servant, our father, is in good health. He is yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obeisance. It just means they respected this person of authority. And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother, Benjamin. This was the youngest brother besides Joseph. Okay? The youngest brother. There's Benjamin and then Joseph. Or Yosef, depending on where you're at in your alphabet. <laughs> All right, so check it out. Benjamin, his mother's son and said, is, is this your younger brother of whom you spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. And Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother. Have you ever seen someone and your guts just start churning, or you get what's called butterflies? Everybody likes to call them butterflies, but it's actually your bowels churning, according to the Bible. It's not butterflies in your gut. It's your bowels churning because you're either surprised, excited, upset. Something's going on in your physical body that's causing the emotion to start. And your bowels churn in your gut. And yes, we call them butterflies. My bowels was churning a couple days ago. <laughs> we married my daughter and my son-in-law together. Yeah, I had some churning bowels that day, let me tell you. <laughs> 31, and he washed his face, oh, oh, hang on, 30, and Joseph made haste, for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep, so he's trying to get away from these dudes, he's not trying to weep in front of his brothers, and gain favor with them, or sorrow, or pity me, or none of that, he is a ruler, and he has to regain his faculty so that he can carry on his business. He can't be sitting there crying and whining in front of his bros because he hadn't seen him all these years. Because they sold him into slavery. And now he sees them and he sees his youngest brother. And he's yearning to see his pops. His family, man. He hasn't seen his family in years. You think this guy ain't shook up a little bit? You darn tootin' he is. Because now God has put him in control of all the food on the earth. Because everybody's coming up to Egypt to buy food. Because there's a great famine. If you go back and read this story from the beginning. Um, Joseph comes right out of prison. And goes into being the ruler of Egypt. A, the second in command of Egypt. Because he predicts a dream to the king. 
there in Egypt that there's going to be seven years of famine right after the seven years of plenty. So they took the seven years of plenty and they stored up and they was wise so that the seven years of famine, they have plenty. And this is how the father brought this family back together. And this is how the father took the father of all these nations and placed him in Egypt so that the children of Israel would eventually become slaves to Egypt and the father would be glorified in delivering them from their bondmen. And he has been glorified, that's for sure. So that's where we're at right now. We're back in Joseph. So let me read this last verse because it really shows him taking control of his emotions, which is exactly what we should do. We should really try to take control of our emotions because our emotions can be our enemy. And I am number one in that. I've been learning this my whole life. And not until recently have I been able to do anything about it. But it's only because I've been reading the word of the Lord and trying to apply that to my life and be obedient to him that these breakthroughs are happening for me. Anger no more rule and reigns my heart. It don't. No, it doesn't. Yes, it tries. But it don't rule me anymore. God rules me. So it's, it's our choice. Let's see what Joseph did real quick. I'm going to read 30 again. It says, And Joseph made haste, <clears throat> for his bowels did yearn upon his brothers, and he sought where to weep. And he entered into a, his chamber and wept there. So see, he pulled himself away from everybody else and got himself back together. 31. And after he got done weeping, this is what he did. He washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, Set on bread. So in other words, set the table. Let's eat. I'm ready for my lunch. Because he only came home for lunch from work. If you read the story, you'll see. He came home for lunch. His brothers is there. That's where he commanded them to be. The servants to take him. He's going to sit down. He's going to eat this meal with them. And then he's going to reveal to them who he is. But I just wanted to show you this morning. Here is a brother that has been sold by his very own family into slavery. And years, many, many years later, he's the second in command in Egypt. And he has control over all the food stocks, everything. And now he sees his family for the first time in like 20 some odd years. And, you know, he experiences some very strong emotions, man. And what did he do? He didn't sit there and blabber mouth in front of his family. He didn't sit there and cuss out his brothers because of what they did to him. He didn't sit there and make somebody feel guilty. He didn't do anything other than his job. He knew that he was a leader, second in command in Egypt, and he couldn't be having no pity parties. He's the one that delegated all the choices and decisions concerning the, uh, the provisions that Egypt had for the rest of the world. What a responsibility, man. You think this man didn't have a little pressure on him? He's feeding the world. <laughs> if you parallel that between Joseph and Jesus, you'll see a lot of similarities in there. If Jesus feeds the world, don't he? Didn't he create the world and create all this food and resources that we live in? This big aquarium that he set up that uh, we try to practice that with our little glass boxes. <laughs> right? Just think about that for a minute. How great and wonderful and the big grand scheme of those things. Right? Nothing needs plugged in. Everything works. We None of us go hungry unless it's choices that we made or our parents made or the people in control around us make. But he's made provisions for every soul on this planet. Now it's up to us to rightfully divide those things. Unfortunately, we live in a world where the enemy rules it right now. But not for too much longer. Our king's coming back very angry with him. And he's definitely going to get put where he belongs. And those of us that are striving and trying and reading. And just trying to be obedient to the word of the Lord. And to our father. He's going to pick us up. And we're going to meet him in the air. And we're going to go to the Mount Zion. And his feet will stand on that mountain. And brother. 
all hell's gonna break loose. So please, please get you a Bible and read. Pray for the for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to open your eyes to his word and give you understanding. Unstop your ears and take the scales off your eyes that you can see and hear truth and turn away from the lies. So please, y'all, look at what Joseph did. I want to read that one more time. What's it say right there in 31? It says, and he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, set on bread. In other words, let's eat. All right. You guys have a good day. Have a good week. Read your Bibles. Praise God.